Hi, this is Daniel Hutchins, and today we're going to be talking about our another video of music history. So today on music history, we are going to be talking about Greg Rowley looks back on his days with Santana, Journey, and Ringo Starr, as you can see right here. Okay, so the voice behind Black Magic Woman, Evil Ways, and the first three Journey albums breaks down his five-decade saga in rock. Okay, so... Greg Rowley, the original lead singer of Journey and Santana, looks back on his time in both bands and discusses his new solo. You might not know the name Greg Rowley, but you definitely know his music. Not only did he sing Black Magic Woman, Evil Ways, Oi Komova, and all the other early Santana classics as the group's original lead vocalist, but he went on to form Journey with Santana guitarist Neil Sean. He was the keyboardist and lead singer of the first three albums before Steve Perry took over as the front man in 1978. He then stuck around for the next two years playing keyboards on massive hits like Lights, Wheel in the Sky, and Love and Touch and Squeezing. Willie has made it in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice with some pivotal roles in history of Journey and Santana. For the past six years, he's toured with Ringo Starr and all the Starr band. He's also just released the new solo disc, Sonic Ranch, and he also called the Rolling Stone to talk about his long career. The real reason he parted ways with Santana and Journey, and what's coming next. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. How did you first meet Carlos Santana? So Carlos and I met in Tomato Patch. He played for Fillmore on a Tuesday night when Bill Graham just let locals in. A friend of mine, Tom Frazier, saw him and I said, I'm going to go find this guy. He came to my house and told me that I was like, all right, cool. He found him working at a hamburger stand called TikTok on Columbia Street in San Francisco and said, do you want to come jam with this guy? He came and we played and of course we were smoking marijuana and stuff when the caps came. But I said, we have to get out of here and all I saw was his ass and his elbows. He was way ahead of us and I was like, great idea, man. I ran into the tomato patch and waited until the cops left. That's how it started with me. It was back in 1968. How long after did the band form? 1968 and a half. It just happened. We were with our high school buddy Danny Horo and Gus Villegas on drums and bass, and Michael Carabello was there too. Then it grew. We just kept on getting new people in. Music that everyone knows has Mike Shreve on it, and Chepetto and David Brown, and all the rest of us. That was it. So then, how many times in your life do you think you've been asked about playing Woodstock? Do you think it's in the thousands by now? <laughs> I can talk about it. It's the same old story. The fact of the matter is, started my career. It started all of us. But it were there. For, if you were there for that concert, you had a career. After that, it's what you do with it. Musically, we connected with generations of people that we needed to connect to. That's kind of it, and it's gone on from there. Did you know what you were playing? Just how... Hard Carlos is tripping on mescaline? No, I had no idea. As a matter of fact, all I could think was, man, he's having a really hard time tuning up. That was my thought, though, but I didn't find out about that for years later. Then I went, oh, okay, now I get it. You are totally straight? Other than a beer or two? Yeah. I think it was really the movie that created the legend of the group that will never die. It won't. It's totally amazing, though, but when you look back upon it, what everyone was going through, each individual, but especially Carlos, he was sitting there holding his guitar because he was a mes on mescaline. He was like, God, get through this. I'll never do this again. Well, he lied, and as I'm playing as hard as I could, Carlos said, we're floating like kites, and Greg was on the ground holding onto the strings. All I could tell him was, yeah, but I caught up to you. Pretty soon, we were all floating everywhere. After Woodstock, Santana had a bunch of big radio hits, and you sang, sang lead on all of them. Does it irritate you that a lot of people think that Carlos sang them? Or at the very least, did they even know your name? 
not irritate, but it confused me. You've got to be kidding, though. But have you watched any of the things we've done? Have you ever been on a concert? It's always been the same thing, though. But look, we picked Santana because it's a cool name. It prints well and emphasized all the time. What was going on was it was like the Paul Butterfield Blues Band or the Allman Brothers. All the names are blues based, but it was all kind of the front and center though. So we picked it and that was it. Everyone said he was the leader of the band and he was the guy. In retrospect, it's not how that all happened though, but the band was really a band. That's why it worked so well as it did. Let's put it this way. Without the 10% this guy put in, the 20% this guy put in, and Carlos and I did 40-40 or whatever, whatever, without the rest of it, it wouldn't be, be what it was. Um, after the third album, he wanted to go different direction musically. Did you have a different opinion about that? I have a totally different opinion about it. If you're the Beatles and you want to go putting horns on your music and doing Rebel Soul or whatever, you can because... You're the Beatles, but we're Santana, and to change the complete direction of music and lose the people and have it already going from the music of Santana 3, the jazz, basically I thought eh, it was a mistake, and I was right, but you couldn't stop it. No, the other point was that I personally, we were all upside down. Carlos puts it well these days, and when he said, we didn't treat each other too good, that's exactly what it was. Too much too soon. We had a world by the balls. And I didn't realize it. That's what happened. But talk about having a moment in time. I was so proud of what was created with this. So proud. Tell me about the day you left. What was the breaking point? Where knew you were done? I don't like talking about that much. But Carlos had a demand and so and so leave the band. But we all did this together. And he had made demands. And not to say that he was totally wrong. But it was the way he did it. I couldn't live with it. That's not what I signed up for. But we ended up pretty all bad. But... The music we created was done by all that fervor. But without it, it probably wouldn't have happened. I've already said, hey, you want a good Latin rock band? You better have Norwegian in it. <laughs> what did you do right after leaving the band? I left music completely. I was just like, I'm done. I want to do something else completely. So I started a restaurant with my father up in Seattle. Not that it was a bad idea to be in business with the, my father, but jumping into a restaurant business from the music business is just like going from the pan to the fryer. Forget it, man. It's horrible. In a nutshell, you need a thousand percent of capacity to make it work because nobody's going to come every night. It was kind of a disaster, though, y'all. So at the same time, I learned a ton of stuff. I was really proud to do it with my dad, but it was a bad endeavor. Hey, you win, you lose. That's how it goes. How did Journey start? That started right after that. I got a call from Neil Sean and Herbie Herbert and Herbie, and the mainstay of that was why the thing worked. They called me up and said, what are you doing? I said, nothing. They said they were going to start something called the Golden Gate Ram from section. He was like basically a band that would play for artists that came to town. That's what they told me. But within two weeks, they were writing songs. It's like nonsense. They lied. <laughs> so... Journey toured a lot in these early years, and they didn't sell a ton of records. It must have been difficult. Very much so at the time. When we were young, you get that gypsy blood, you travel, everything's forgotten. We had a goal. That was a real goal in this success. We didn't feel it much, but we did go out for four months at a time, two weeks off, four months at a time, two weeks off. It gets pretty constant, pretty grueling. But how did you hear about him hiring a second singer? I thought that it was tremendous because I was would no longer play four instruments at the same time. Harmonica, sing leads, and sing backgrounds, and like the whole image and of what it became. When Steve Perry first came to the fold, Neil and I were like, I don't know, this guy's sort of cooning it. We wanted the rock, but when you were at the end product, we were wrong. At least as far as being successful, he was the right guy. We started writing songs for a singer instead of writing songs for all solo work and expertise of playing. But the way Journey had come out ten years ago... We've been playing the jam circuit, but it would have been a totally different thing because it was um, energized and cool and different with all the rhythms and solo and stuff. When that got into playing the vocals, it was cool. The song like Lights was a very different kind of thing, though, for y'all to that uh, point. Did you mind doing softer ballads after that? 
No, you know what? Let me put it this way. Music's music to me. It doesn't matter. I go back to Frank Sinatra on the go, and man, that's awesome. We did with Journey the same thing. There was a jam thing with it, y'all, but then it got more congruent and more of the vocals and harmonies. I've never done it and found it more appealing. As a matter of fact, to this day, I use those ideas with my own music with pro maybe not as strong as many harmonies and triples or all that stuff, but the same attitude. I learned a lot of writing music and Journey and its journey. Okay, so like I said, this is a pretty, pretty long interview from the Rolling Stone, so, about Greg Rowley, so, and we're already going almost 11 minutes in this video, I don't want to cut too much y'all time, so, if you guys like my content, please hit a thumbs up y'all, and make sure you subscribe, and if you want to see more music history on my channel, please comment down that below, and you guys have a wonderful night, bye.